Okay, welcome to UC Berkeley. And we are at Evans Hall. That's a math building because right now I'm going to do some math questions with you guys. And I'm just going to find and show you guys a classroom. And I'm going to use this classroom right here. Let's see how it is inside. And as you guys can see, the typical math classroom at UC Berkeley. A lot of things have changed, but the blackboard stays the same. Surprisingly, there are two televisions. All right, cool, huh? And I'll be using the middle board right here, of course. And as you can see, the eraser here at UC Berkeley is long. Okay, we'll do something challenging in this video, and the equation we're going to solve is sine z is equal to 2. Is that even possible? Well, if you're just talking about the real world, no, we have no solutions for this equation, right? However, if we're talking about the imaginary world, a lot of things can happen. In fact, we do have complex solutions for this equation here, and that's why I use z instead of like x or the theta, right? So, how are we going to deal with this? I will have to first give you a new definition for sine. And let's take a look of the Euler's formula first. e to the iz is equal to cosine z plus i sine z. And you see right here, the input z, right? And this is the famous Euler's formula. If you want to see the proof of this, you can check the video in the description. And now this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at e to the negative iz, all right? So in this case, my new input is technically the negative z, right? Negative z. i is still the i. In this case, well, we will just have cosine of negative z inside. That's a new input. And then plus i is still i, sine is still sine, but the input is negative z, right? So these are the two equations that I'm going to look at. I'm going to keep the first one as how it is, and let me write down cosine z plus i sine z is equal to that, e to the i z. And then for the second one, let me put this part first, but you know cosine is an even function, so the negative doesn't matter. So I can just write this down as cosine z as well. And in this case, Sine is an odd function, I can put the negative outside, right? So we can talk about this as negative i sine plus dc inside because we took the negative outside already. And this right here is equal to e to the negative i z, like this. And now what I'm going to do is I can just multiply this equation by a negative, you would like. So let's put on this negative and make this positive and make this negative, all right? So that I can just combine them together because my goal is to solve what? Sine z. Cosine, cosine, they will cancel out right here, and then this right here is 2i sine z, and this is equal to e to the i z minus, neg my minus, this is minus, minus e to the negative i z, right? And then we can just divide both sides by 2i, so We'll just have sine z equals to e to the i z minus e to the negative i z all over 2 i. Right? So this is the new definition of sine in the complex world that we are going to use in this video. So now let's get back to this right here. Once again, sine z is equal to e to the i z minus e to the negative i z all over 2i, and then we can just say this is equal to 2 on the hand side. And now we'll just be doing some typical algebra. We can multiply 2i on both sides. So this is e to the i z minus e to the negative i z equals to 4i. And let me tell you, this is very similar to sinh, okay, sinh x, but yeah. The inverse thing should x, right? Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to solve for z, right? Because z is the input. If I can get the input, that's the solution. So now you see, we have passed the iz here. This is negative iz, right? So if you would like, you can just multiply everything by e to the pass the iz. So you will see the following. This distribute multiply, right? So the first one is e to the iz 
square because when you have this times that is something square, right? And then this times that, well, the power becomes zero. We'll just have minus one. And this is equal to four i times that. So do this. Four i e to the i z like that. And now I will keep this as how it is. Parentheses e to the i z to a second power. Move this to the other side. Minus four i. And let me also open the parentheses. And this is e to the i z. And then minus one. This is equal to zero. Something square. This is the same thing, but to the first power. This is have no of that, right? So this is the quadratic equation in terms of e to the i z. So we can use the quadratic formula to solve this. So this will tell us the input e to the i z by the quadratic formula. We know we will have the b value is this negative four i. Okay, keep that in mind. So we will have negative b, which is the negative right here, and the negative four i inside like that, plus minus. Square root b square b is that right? Negative four i square minus four ac. A is one. C is negative one. All right. A is one. But yeah, <laughs> one negative one and all that all over two times one. All right. E to the i z equals. Negative negative becomes positive four i. This is plus minus square root. Let's do this in our head. Negative four i square. Negative four square is positive sixteen. But then i square is negative one. So this is going to give us negative sixteen. Okay. And then negative four times one times negative four is going to be positive four plus the negative sixteen. We are going to end up with negative twelve. Right. So I can erase this right here for you guys, and then this is all over two, and then this is e to the i z equals to. Let's break this down, and let me finish this down. Four i plus minus. This is the same as saying four times three inside, right? And then the four inside the square root becomes the regular two on the outside. But this was negative, so we have to take out the i. And then earlier I mentioned the three, but that's still inside of the radical. So this is what we have all over two. And then you see this is e to the i z equal to. We'll reduce the twos. In the meantime, also let me factor out the i. So let me factor out the i. And then four over two is two. Two over two is one. And then plus minus right here we have the square root of three, like that. Okay. Well, we have e to the something equals to something else. What do we usually do? Of course, we do the typical thing. We can just take the ln on both sides, right? So that ln and e will cancel each other, and right here we will just have i z equal ln. And you know this is the product of two things: ln i, and then inside was i times this quantity, so I can break it apart. This is ln of i, and then plus because inside of the If it's a product, we can just have the sum of two ln. The second one is ln parentheses two plus minus square root of three, like this. And if you would like, you can just divide everything by i, and you're pretty much done. But let's do this <laughs> more legitimately because what in the world is ln i? Just like earlier, we talked about the sign in terms of its complex version. We should also talk about how can we. Enter a complex number into the ln function, right? So now I'm going to go back to my first board and I have to talk about the definition of the complex logarithm, real, real quick, right? So consider you have a complex number z is equal to a plus b i, and let's look at the plane, right? This is the real values and this is the uh, complex axis, so. Now say we have the complex number right here, a plus b i. That means from here to here is a, from here to here is b, right? So this is that. Once again, real values and then the complex axis or the imaginary axis. Anyway, so a plus b i. Hopefully you guys have seen this. Before. If you guys haven't, now this is the time. 
Another way to look at this, we can look at this as the polar form, just like the polar equation. It's very similar. From the origin to here, all right? Yes, I don't have a color chalk. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, right here, what I want is, I want to know the distance from here to here. I will call that to be r. And then I need to know what the angle is. So when you have this equal to a plus bi, I can write this down as, well, as we know, just like the <laughs> come, uh, just like the polar equations, when you have this right here, a is equal to the x value, which is the cosine, right? But you multiply by r, r cosine theta. Likewise, b is equal to r sine theta. So if z is equal to a plus bi, a is that. I can just put an r cosine theta plus b is that, so r sine theta. And we still have the i, so let's put the i right here, OK? And now I can, of course, factor out the r, I mean the r and then inside is cosine theta plus i sine theta. And do you guys see the connection? This right here is the Euler's formula. So I can put this into the polar form just like that, right? But technically, this is called the polar form. But anyway, this is r. This right here, by the Euler's formula, it is e to the i theta, because theta right now is the input, OK? And why am I showing you guys this? Because now, when you have this right here, z is equal to r e i theta. This is just another way to represent the complex number. I can now take the ln on both sides. So on the left hand side, we have ln z. And this is going to be ln of r times something. This is the product, so I can break it apart. ln r plus ln of e to the i theta, right? And now here's the punch line. ln of that complex number. Once again, the z is the complex number. Sometimes it can be real because real number is also a complex number. Anyway, ln z is equal to ln r plus ln and e cancel out. So we have just plus i theta, right? And at the end, here is the typical things that we will do in the complex analysis, that kind of thing ln of a complex number, this is equal to ln, r is the distance from the origin to the complex number. So let me make a note. We use absolute value to denote distance, right? So r is equal to absolute value of z. In this case, just like the typical distance formula, you know this is a squared plus b squared. But instead of r, I'll put down this. So we will have ln absolute value of z to denote the distance from the origin to the complex number, right? And then plus i is just i. And to be slightly technical, this theta right here is called the argument. And they just put on ARG. Um, doesn't really matter. I'll just write it down right here for you guys at least one time. But because I'm not really getting to complex analysis, let me just box this, all right? r is the distance, theta is the angle. That's what I'm going to tell you guys in this video, but here's the typical things that they will do. Anyway, so now let's figure out what's L and I. So let's do that right here. Uh, question, what is L and I? And now we have to look at the real axis and then the complex axis, right? I is the same as saying 0 plus 1i. 0 is right here, and then 1 i is right here. So here we have the i. Let me put it down here, right? So this is the same as 0 plus 1 i. OK, so what's the angle from here to here? Pi over 2, right? So this is going to be the angle theta. And what's the distance from here to here? Just one step up, right? So we know r will be 1, or the absolute value of z will be 1. So as you can see, this is going to be by that formula, okay? By that formula, which is going to be ln of r, which is one. Let me just denote that this is supposed to be r, which is one. 
and then we add it with i times this angle. I'm going to say this, but I'm not going to write down too much things. Otherwise, I can never finish this video. The theta okay, is defined to be from negative pi to positive pi. Do not include the negative pi, but we do include the positive pi. All right? So let's go like this. So we are going to use pi over 2 from here to here. Anyway, if you just measure the angle from here to here the usual way, that's positive pi over 2. All right? So this is the argument, or the theta, however you want to call it. Ln1, that's a usual Ln1, which is 0. So all in all, you know, Ln i it is equal to just i times pi over 2. How cool is this? So put this down right here now. Run out space, but it's OK, because I have another one. All right? So, let me just put this down right here real quick. Ln i, well, I should have already done like this. iz is equal to ln i, let me just copy down this real quick, plus minus ln 2 plus minus square root 3, right? So, this is iz. ln i, once again, is the number that we got earlier, which is i pi over 2. So now, this right here is just i pi over 2 and then plus minus. Whoops, it's just a plus. Okay, it's not plus minus. Anyway, ln 2 plus minus. Now this is the plus minus. And yes, we have multiple solutions, but anyway. Now I'm just going to divide everything by i, so let's check this out, all right? So I will just put this down like this, multiply by 1 over i, so that this and that will cancel. Yeah, you guys know how to do it. So you have just z. This right here, no more i, just pi over 2. And then plus 1 over i, right here, 1 over i. And then this is ln 2 plus minus square root of 3, OK? i in the denominator doesn't <laughs> make us comfortable. So let's multiply i on the bottom and also i on the top. And you know this is going to be negative 1 on the bottom. So we'll change the plus to minus. So on all, z is equal to pi over 2 minus, once again, the minus is because i squared give us this minus. On the top, 1 times i is still i, and then we have this part, ln parentheses 2 plus minus square root of 3. This is the gentleman. This is the answer. Okay, one of the answers, well, actually two of the answers, because we have the plus minus to that equation. And perhaps I'll just leave it to you guys as an exercise. If you are checking out a textbook question and then maybe you are working this out, right? Some textbooks, they may give you this for the final answer. We have z is equal to pi over 2. And they do have the plus minus right here. And then we still have the i and then the ln. And the inside here is just 2 plus square root of 3. I didn't write anything down incorrectly, okay? We do have the plus minus right here. And then inside it's just going to be a 2 plus square root 3, okay? And to finish this all together, we can put down plus 2 pi. Well, it's the integer multiple of 2 pi because sine is periodic. So this may be some of the solutions that you'll see, but I will just stop right here. If there's a request, I'll show you guys how to go from this part to this part. And once again, the 2 pi n is just to be picky to find all the solutions. Anyway, right? So hopefully you guys like this. Uh, I'm going to just put this down and show you guys that again. Sine z is equal to 2. It does have a solution. In fact, it has a lot of solutions. You never know what will happen in the complex world. So, yeah, be careful.